Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babb and we're brought to you by Toyota Captiva Spine, Foundation Risk Partners, USA Triathlon. I'm, I couldn't be more excited to chat with Adam Hansen. He's the only rider to complete 20 consecutive Grand Tours. Think about that for a second. 20 consecutive Grand Tours. I, that's, it blows me away, Adam. First of all, thank you so much for taking time. Well, it's uh, lovely to uh, finally meet you. So talk a little bit about what got you into cycling to begin with. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I was actually a triathlete um, to begin with. Really? Yeah, I was. Um, and I was a really good swimmer, really good runner, and I couldn't ride a bike. <laughs> um, so you started riding a bike to, to that be was better at triathlon? That was the only reason. And the whole idea was to go to Europe and join an amateur team. Yeah. And just, just to, because I, I was really focused and wanted to do everything correctly and I wanted to ride like a professional. Yeah. And I spent um, one year there and I enjoyed it, enjoyed it quite a lot. And I did another year and then, um, I, you know, I started to get some nice uh, contracts and just kept going. And in my back of my mind, it was always like, I always go back to triathlons one day. Always, always, always. Yeah, yeah. And then, what, 18 years later? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. You know, I'm running out of years in my life and um, I sort of had to pull the pin sooner. So 2007 to 2020. And you had a stage win at the Giro in 2013, one at the Vuelta in 2014, the second Aussie to complete uh, all three Grand Tours in one t year. Uh, you, uh, the, everything goes on and on. What do you look at as maybe your best race as a cyclist? My best race? I think the Vuelta win was probably my most. Why? Yeah, it was towards the end of the stage. Um, it was the 19th stage also, so it was yes. the end of the race, uh, Grand Tour. And it was everyone's fatigue. There was a lot of climbing also, and I tacked on the climb with the favourites, and I got away, and um, and they yeah they couldn't catch me before the final. And it was it was nice because you know you had it wasn't like a normal normal cycling breakaway. You break away, and it's more like you're the best of the breakaway. Well, right. I was actually the best of the guys in that day. Um, so that was for me. It was personally it was yeah my favourite win. When you're when you make the decision to hang it up from cycling, was is some of it? Hey, I want. I've always said I want to get back to triathlon. It's time to go back, or was it just time? No, I. It, it was always in my head to do triathlons afterwards. Yeah. Um. But you know, road cycling. There's more money there. Oh, um, wait, it's, yeah. Well. It's a. It's 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 easier in the sense you sign one piece of paper and your whole career is well, your whole year is sorted it's you not know? like you're negotiating with individual race directors and things well like yeah that. exactly yeah. but like you, you just you don't have to think about sponsors you don't have to think about anything you That's just you know you get point. your program yeah. and it's, it's i don't it's not easier but it's mentally it's easier well it's simpler oh it's much like just planning for this race you know you, like a one individual race you got to book your own flights book your own tickets get you your bike here your, your you wheels put it together make sure it's all okay which i still haven't done you know and i've done two races this year already where my bike i wasn't able to race because i had problems with the bike where normally you just give you just rock up and your bike's already there at the race right know? and it's in perfect condition and your kit you don't have to worry about what logo goes where and Everything. they're going to give you your kit and there's yeah. a you in got this your sense masseuse and all that everything so in this sense it's really good and as years went on and i always had new contracts and that i um i just kept recycling but as i got older and older i was like well if i want to take triathlon serious i really have to stop and the only reason the main reason why i stopped was because i want to do triathlons and how tough has that transition been um you know this year i've had a lot of bad luck i've had so much bad luck um my training's going really well yeah but my racing uh racing's just been i've had um, missed flights because of covid i've had um, bike problems i've had two flat tires in single race i've had bike computer break the night before a race where I, and I was so you had no idea what's going on You're well right. I, I do but the thing is I was using Camp Agnolo, and if you're in uh -huh. Poland, and to get well, this one, they were laughing at me. The bike shops like Camp Agnolo, two weeks. I'm like, yeah, I needed like two hours. <laughs> um, just problems after problems. So, um, but you know, it's uh, it, it's it's come. The training's going well. I just need I just need a break. That's yeah, all. So yeah. hopefully next year will be a lot smoother than this year. And when you come to a, a race like this, obviously you've raced all over the world, all different type of races. I'm sure you've been on race tracks before. Uh, what do you take away from this type of race where it's, you know, it's basically you're in the arrow position for a, for a long time? Yeah, um, I'm super impressed when I arrived. Uh, the funny thing is my hotel's just over there. Looked on Google Maps. Yeah, walk here. <laughs> It is massive, this place. I yeah. was, yeah, I was really shocked. And coming around, looking at the banks, I was like, this is like a track. It's like an indoor race track, uh, a yeah. cycling yeah, track. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, wow. And um, Have you ridden yet? No, I haven't. Yeah, um, yeah I, was, I, I was a bit pushed with time this morning. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's going to be, be, for me, it's going to be interesting because um, 
you do have to be stuck in your position right. and you're going to have to p apply power the whole time. Right. Um, and this might be, this will be difficult for non-good cyclists, I think, because um, a, a lot of cycling, uh, like if you do training on the indoor training, training on outside, people forget when you're training outside, there's stop signs, um, red lights, you stand up, sit down, and you, you give your body all right. these micro little breaks and that. We're here. You, there's no downhill there's no corners there's nothing it's right. just straight in the position and it's it's tough on the body for sure it's it's not going to be so easy when people say it's flat they think ah oh, this is not so easy you know you no no it's flat but it's 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 flat but you're pushing means you're pushing yeah. wattage into the wind yeah always so, you know you're, the normalized power is going to be very stable here very stable you, you were mentioning before we started chatting about normalized power and when you're you think okay well the top guys at tour de france are the guys who would come and be great triathletes but you were saying not, not those guys, not. right? Yeah, it's definitely the the workhorses, you know, the good domestics. Domestics. Yeah, so these guys, for example, when a breakaway goes away and the sprinting teams want to close that break, the guys that they send on the front, they're the ones doing 350 to 360 watts for five or six hours. You right. Know? And they have to do it the whole day, every day, you know. And the GC riders, they sit in the back protected by their team come to a climb they do the thing for 30 minutes they do it very impressive you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they do it very impressive but you know they um it's, there's it's, a lot of relaxing yeah it's a lot of not relaxing, relaxing so yeah. much but a lot of times where they're actually not pedaling yeah that's definitely true definitely true where they have to save all their energy to use it the right and last moment right where work horse and domestic like, like myself, you're, yeah, yes you know we have to work the whole day um, so these guys would turn into better triathletes than, yeah, your top Tour de France contenders. I was just interviewing Cam Worth the other day, who obviously has made the transition from, you know, the Peloton into triathlon. has done very well. He's His running getting better, and obviously swimming's getting better, and the cycling. He's, I think he's a guy who's, you know, the people were going 415, 417 in Kona, and then all of a sudden they're going 402. And I think a lot of that is a Cam Worth factor. It's like, well, now this guy can run. We better be able to ride with yep. him. What he mentioned, I said, are there guys in the Peloton who are talking to you about wanting to get into this? And he goes, well, yeah, there are. But the main thing is being a great cyclist is great. But if you're not front pack swimmer, you lose that weapon because you aren't able to ride at your, your capabilities because you're too fatigued from the swim. Uh, true? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when I, I did this uh, race in Richone and I did a terrible swim, terrible swim. And um, I just never saw the field, never saw the field. Yeah. And then I, my, as my swim got better and better, I did um, the the world, f uh, it's so complicated the names of triathlons, the world full distance championships okay. in Elmer. And my swim was okay and my bike was really good and I was able to come onto the run in third position. Um, yes. So as the, you can see that, at, and it wasn't my bike that got me there. It was right. my swim that got me in a better position on the, the bike. bike yeah. And you weren't fatigued out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Have you, have you found yourself doing a lot more training in the pool just to in high intensity so that you're able to do that? Yeah, it's more, um, for me, it's more um, more on the technique. I'm, I'm just trying to get more used to the, the feel of the water and that. Right. Um, and, and I actually came from a swimming background, so I'm not so stressed on the swimming side okay. um, at the moment. Yeah. The other thing that Cam was saying is when people go, okay, someone's going to come over from the Peloton and they're going to be really good at this right away. He says, you don't want to underestimate how great the cyclists are in this sport. Yeah. You, know, you know, Sam Long and obviously Lionel Sanders and uh, Jan and Sebastian. He says, your, pro, your typical pro cyclist is not doing a four-hour time trial. Right, that's not that's sort of in all the years you were cycling you probably didn't do that that often well never no one does yeah, that's, right no one does and what these guys are putting out in the numbers for four hours there's not many cyclists that can do this um that's that's the truth of the matter there's there's you know there's always some guys that can right yeah but they can't swim and run you know um, <laughs> there's, yes. there's other aspects to it um the numbers that the triathletes are doing the top guys um, yeah, it, it, like if I was to guess them, some of the bigger riders would be like 360 or 370 yeah. watts per hour, uh, for four hours. Um, that's that's not so easy to do. That's that's <laughs> that's not really not so easy to do. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. So what is the goal for you? I mean, the <laughs> long term goal. You're coming in. You know, people go, oh, he's 40 years old. But the reality is, your legs are fresh. For people, really hurt themselves running. Yeah, running is where the injuries come from you're brand new right you get a blank canvas <laughs> and even though do you feel that way you're 40 years old but there's really no reason you can't have success at this oh for sure not um i've taken very well very good care of my body yes um and i i, I 
realistically, I think I've probably got four years left. Yeah. Um, and I think I can race very high level. The, the advantage I have is definitely with the full distance um, events where the speed is not so high. Um, you know, if I was to do Olympic distance, no, I, no. I, I can never do this. Um, I just have to be realistic about that. Um, but yeah, the speeds are not so fast. That, so the, the fast twitch fibers is okay um, right. to, to handle the speeds. And, you know, I've been doing so much cycling my whole life. I've got the engine to do eight hour events, mm -hmm. so I can definitely do it in uh, endurance form. I just got to get the running technique and um, the swimming technique down pat. Do you see yourself more of the full distance, like the 140.6, 70.3? What do you see as your uh, be best for you? In my mind, at the start, it was definitely the um, the full line mans. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually enjoying the halves at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying them. That's, I mean, it's yeah. a cool distance. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 I like it because, I don't, actually, I don't know why I like it. Maybe because, um, maybe because it's not eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you can do more of them in one year. Maybe it's that. The, uh, yeah. And racing, yeah. I mean, is you're a guy, uh, I don't think what people understand, we talk about triathlete, like Cam, I remember one year did eight full Ironmans in one year. And I was like, dude, that is ridiculous. He goes, you, what you don't understand is because of my history, yeah. I could do a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride every single day of the year. That's exactly what I'm I sure you're yep. the same way, yeah, yeah. right? It's the run. It's that, the run the problem. Yeah. But I had to learn the sport. So yeah. I needed to do a lot of them to, f yeah. to figure the whole thing out. Exactly. And, um, you know, so there's really no reason that you can't, what's been the biggest surprise for you coming in, in racing? Um, or has there been? Maybe there no, isn't. No, actually, there isn't something. No. Yeah. No, nah, not really. No. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I, I'm doing worse than I thought, but it's because uh, more more because of luck. Um, but no, it's everything I expected, actually. Okay. I knew it wouldn't be so easy. I, sure. I knew this from the beginning. I knew that my swim would take a bit longer and my run would take a bit longer. In training, my run's going really well. And in training, my swimming's going really well. Putting it all together is something different. Yes. Um, I have a huge advantage with um, nutrition um, because I've been doing 20 years of nutrition and, yes. and cycling is very different in the sense where um, where in triathlons it's very you, you know you, 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 you really decide when to eat right and cycling we don't have that freedom of choice you know you might think oh, i might eat every half now but there could be something you know crosswind section you're on your limit racing and you can't someone eat makes a break exactly that, yeah and two hours you can't eat or drink you know and then you've got to stuff it in you know so because of this i am really tolerant to anything on the bike um and, and in the race so i've got a huge advantage in the nutrition side um but surprises Probably the, the the most um the let's say the naive thing was exactly what you said about just the the support you know you're by yourself where you know I've had problems with my bike arriving at a location and I'd have to fix it myself you right. know and you're very limited with time the tools around you because I don't have my workshop and that where before I didn't realize how much the cycling team supported me where we had four spare bikes for each rider, you know? So if something dramatically happened, new bike, there you go. You know, where with me, it's like, okay, I gotta fix this part. Where do I go, call the places, you know? And most of the bike shops are set up for mom and pop and putting training wheels on a bike. They're exactly. not set up for, I need this Campagnolo. Yeah, well, they can't even most, spell it. Yeah, and when most races are on a Sunday, everything slows on a Saturday also, and, and some countries too, and then you just really, it's it's Your host. And this was the biggest surprise for me. Um, yeah. The, where you're really on your own. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's actually, that's, uh, that's fascinating. Uh, you're an engineer, designed your own shoes, wrote software for your team. How has that come in handy with triathlon? Um, well, I actually make my own shoes. Oh, you um, make your own? Yeah, I actually make them. Um, so with my shoes, it was a, it was a big problem because um, to get my shoes on was a bit of a nightmare. So it's made for cycling races, not right. for triathlons. Um, so I've had to full change the design. So at the moment, I've got a two-piece design where the, the front of the shoe slides forward to put my feet in. I pull the strap at the back and just locks in. So now I have one of the fastest shoes to put on. Yes. Um, cosmetically, it's not finished at the moment right. um, so nice but that's okay well, are you is this something you'll get into manufacturing or like, um, well, you never know well uh maybe one time um but yeah the shoes i yeah i've always been um yeah known for making my own shoes yes. um but yeah they, they, the, the triathlon versions um yeah it's fast to put on i just got to make the the ratchet system more more let's say um production style it's, it's more prototype style just with my 3d printer and all that at home that i made the system so i gotta um improve the the cosmetic side a bit but yeah it's um 
It's going good though. So what what are the goals for after this? Is it off season time or? Um, yeah, I've had a lot of um, problems this year, so I don't deserve an off season. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to look like I'm just trying to race as much as possible. Yeah. That's what I want to do. There's a lot of races around the world. Yeah, and I'll go anywhere to do a race. I just want to race, um, and that's probably one of the let's say the the beauty things about from my side. I don't have any um, emotion emotional connection to a race, so I'm yeah. happy to go anywhere. You know what I mean? If it's a race, I just want to be there and race. Um, yeah. So. And it's, it's exciting for me where I can actually pick my races now, where I couldn't do that in cycling. So when I was talking about Cam doing eight Ironmans in one year and we talk about people racing, you know, 10, 15 times, how, how many days would you be on your bike as a pro cyclist a year? As a pro cyclist, in, in the middle of my career, I was doing, um, I did three years of 100 race days a year. 100 race days in, a, in year. a year. Yeah. And that's um, just racing. So yeah. that's more than every four days you're doing a professional bike race. And I did that at world tour level. So all the races I was doing is a top, top <laughs> that's level. Un, that's, that's ridiculous, not, That's by not the training way. or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then when you add in the training, you're probably on your bike 330, 340 days a year. It's a lot. I never never look at these numbers. Yeah, so well, I know. Yeah. But you still love it. Oh, I love cycling, yeah. Yeah, but in terms of this triathlon, I mean, you did this when you were younger. Well, I tell now you coming what, back, is I it? I tell, yeah. you, I tell you one story. Yeah. Um, you know, when I'm at the, the Grand Tours, I'm starting the race. We'd, we'd all, you're, you're, you're there for two minutes. And you're just like, you're just sort of leaning over your bike and that. And I look at some guys' heart rates and they'd be like full nervous at the start, 120 heart rate. I look at mine, it's like 45 beats, right? And as a domestic, I know what my job is. I can do my job. I've done so many Grand Tours. Right. And I'm not really racing. You know, I'm helping these guys. Right. When I did this um, Ironman in Florida two years ago, just, just for fun, I'm at the start line and my race my heart was racing seriously i was like i'm racing again you know and I was for like, me for me exactly right. and i was so excited you know what i mean and for me i was like yep yeah, this is this i i gotta quit cycling to get into racing because i'm like this now i'm at the race and i'm like i'm re like at the start lines so I'm, it's it's okay i'm nervous you. again yeah and, and that's cool this is the feeling that i, I really missed when so. you it's funny because when you think about it when you go to a race you're dom domestique for a guy who maybe doesn't have it and your no, all that's your work like, is sort of goes to naught, yeah. and it's hard to stay motivated. Yeah, it, no, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's happened a lot of times where um, you go to a race and you, you've had really good training, and they they call you know the the, the, the strategy for the day, and you're like, okay, I, I help this young guy, and he hasn't proven himself, and and I know he's not gonna you know. Um, you know ahead of you know because well, you've yeah. been training with him. You know what they got. Yeah, and that's um yeah, and sometimes it's sort of you know I've had. You know, uh, talks with the sports director where I've had these ideas, what we should do and that. And, you know, can I attack with um, 4K to go? It's a beautiful climb and that. He goes, yeah, but we have a sprinter and he can get top five or something. And it's like, he says, stay with him. And then actually this one stage in the Velta, a different rider attacked at the exact same place I wanted to. Same age as me also. And it was kind of funny because we both had the same idea. He yeah. attacked. And, um, and they had told you not to do it. He told me not to do it and he won. And I, and I said to the sports director afterwards, all I had to do was stay in his wheel and I was second. Yeah, because we would have yeah, got two spots. Yeah, and then um, it was like, yeah, okay, but you know, you know, it's, it's, it's always this, you know. And so you, you stop racing for yourself. It gets very repetitively um, repetitive. It's uh, a paycheck. It is. It does. It's the sad thing is it is in the end. There's a lot of pro cyclists that just do it as a job, and you're not racing for yourself. And it's just constantly just helping, 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 which, which is great. You know? yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, It is yeah. great, and, I, and I'm not talking it down at all. It is great, but here for me it's, uh, it's a totally different experience so i'm just loving it i remember there was a pro triathlete named caroline stefan who used to be a, a bike racer from in switzerland and she would lead out right lead out and then she was like when she did her first triathlon and won right she was like oh my god <laughs> i but why was i ever doing that mm. why pulling everybody else and and letting them get the glory what the hell yeah so yeah, I, I mean Part of it is you, you, the glory comes from from being able to race for yourself. Yeah. Not so much just winning the race. Yeah. It's, it's you're out there yeah. just being able to. The, nobody's telling you when to go, when not to go. At the same time, nobody's pack, taking care of your bike. Hmm. So it's sort of a trade off. Yeah, it is a trade off. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 great to be racing again. That's the main thing. I love it. Mm -hmm. So you'll this next year will be a, a full year. You'll probably be racing over the winter. Yeah, well, um, I, I will really want a super busy program next year. Um, I've got everything sorted now, so I just um, just got to show myself. And so you live in Czechoslovakia when you're in. Yep. When you think about an Australian living in <laughs> Czechoslovakia, you're like, well, I, I don't. I think that's a small subset of people who are from us. Very small. What's the What's the draw? Um, it's a beautiful country. It okay. really is. It has four seasons. So now you know we've got a bit of a cold patch over over Europe. 
the Belgians are stuck in rain. Yes. I have full snow. I can go cross-country skiing, hike in the snow. I can full train in the winter there also. And to me, that's one of the, the beauty part, the, the most beautiful thing about it is where we have the best summers, we have the best winters. We don't have this... this sort of that gray, yeah, no snow, cold crap. For four months, you know? Yeah, no. Yeah, nobody no, wants like that. that. It's a beautiful place. I like it. And it's also, with the thing with cycling also, a lot of cyclists live in Girona. That's yes. the main place. And for me, it's like, you know, when I'm not racing, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to be hanging around cyclists all the time. <laughs> I don't want to go to a coffee shop and see everyone, you know. I just want to go to the race, do my thing, come home, have my own little private life, right. and do my own thing. And then that, it also makes you more hungry to go to the races, you know, because you're away from these people. When you go and see them, you know, you're more excited to see them. Instead of ha always having, like I heard Drona has something like 180 professional cyclists out there. Oh, my God. And it's not a big place, you know. No. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning now, are you more excited than when you were a pro cyclist? Yeah, it's, um, I have to admit, like, just the whole training aspect is really good. Like, it's not, you know, if you don't feel like riding, you got two other options, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, um, yeah. This is good. And even when you do a day of, you, you train every single discipline, um, it's just so rewarding in that sense. Like, you're, it's, it's, training is so much more fun in triathlons than cycling. Well, because you know that you control your own destiny. Mm. Nothing better than that. Yeah. Adam, thanks so much for taking time. This has been such a treat for me to get to chat with you. Congratulations on an amazing career. And Thank you. I can't wait to see what you do out here at Daytona and what you do this next few years in the sport. Again, I, I think you're, it's like you're brand new, <laughs> right? This is all okay. exciting. And the fact that your, their legs don't know the pounding of run. Did you, while you were a cyclist, were you training and doing some swimming and weight training and running? Swimming, no. I put on muscle really easily. So yes. I, I you really, had one to avoid that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I never touched weights at all um swimming <clears throat> I, I love swimming um always loved it when i was um my whole life yeah so i always swam a little just a little go to the pool like three times a year but do a proper session you right know? i just i just loved it a lot um but running i did i did a little bit of running also okay. um, only in the winter a lot of hiking in that um but yeah not, not too much love it adam thank you so much thank you very much appreciate it adam hansen has been our guest ever again again breakfast with bob clash daytona thanks so much for tuning in we'll catch you in a little bit stay tuned